not. Um, we're going to take a few minutes to go into a meditation to clear our minds, get ourselves centered and grounded for the day. So we're going to start focusing on our breath, breathing deep into the belly, not the chest, slowing everything down. We're really bad about hitting the ground running and we feel like everything has to be fast and it doesn't. So breathing deep into the belly, slowing everything down. Bringing our spine long, our shoulders back and down. Dropping the energy from up here in the top of the torso to down here in the lower half of the body. This helps to ground us, to center us, to get all the excess energy out of the shoulders, out of the head, and bring it down so that we can find a calmer, slower pace. Find the emotion that you want to hang on to today. We can choose what we attune our vibrations, our emotions to every day. And it's best to do this in the morning to decide how you want to feel today. So once you have your emotion picked, Hold it in your heart center and feel what that emotion feels like. When's the last time you remember having that emotion? Or do you have a good positive memory tied to that emotion? Let it swell in your heart. Radiate out through all the cells of your body. Push it out into your aura. And let it just completely encompass you. If this feels like enough, then fine. Or if you'd like to, push it even further to encompass the entire room. Drowning in the emotion. This positive feeling. And the vibration of it. The feeling of it. Breathing it in with every breath. And with every exhale, releasing a little bit of stress, a little bit of tension. Sinking into your seat. Trusting in your abilities, in the world around you, in the direction and path that you're on. And know that as long as you're leading and deciding and living from your brain heart coherence, that place within you where your awareness is connected to both your heart and your mind. Know that as long as you're here and coming from that place, then you are on the correct path.
So we're going to talk about, first of all, let me know how you're feeling after that. What emotion did you choose? Drop them in the comments. Tell me how you felt before, how you feel now, while I find my notes. Excuse my child. I can't lock her in a closet or anything, so. She's in a mood this morning. Okay, so coping with change. The only consistency in life is change. Anything else is just an illusion, okay? Safety, security, things being constant, the same all the time. You know, as human beings, we like for things to be the same all of the time. Uh, whether we think we do or not, we are innately designed to fall into a routine and we get comfortable with this routine and when the routine shifts or changes or there's a wrench thrown in the mechanism and we get all sorts of like uh, out of whack and but it's just an illusion okay every day we're growing we're learning we're getting older we're things around us are changing the seasons are always changing the children in our life are growing and adapt we have to be adaptable okay and so the only, that's a very, very, very key aspect to remember about life. The only consistency anywhere is change. That is it. The earth is always changing. Our place in space is always changing. Everything is always changing. And once we recognize and understand and acknowledge that the only consistency is change, then we can begin to become more comfortable with it. Change is a good thing. If we stayed in the same place all the time, we would stagnate. And you see it all the time. You may not realize you see it, but stagnation of energy happens when there is no change. You know, things get dusty and old and tattered and just stagnant and they feel yucky they feel don't feel good anymore they the new wears off and they become to get they begin to get weathered and so introducing new and better things always to your life is a great way to progress to grow to become better if nothing ever changes you'll always be exactly where you are and the spirit doesn't like that the body doesn't like that the mind likes that because the mind sees that as safety because you know stick with the devil you know familiarity but we're not meant to stay the same all of the time we come into this life to learn to grow to adapt to become better and bigger than what we were yesterday so understanding that and coming to terms with that can help you flow into change more smoothly rather than fighting against it because the fighting against it is what causes all of the friction it's what causes the problems the the friction in your head in your mind in your emotions that dislike the change it's all just friction created from fighting it so because we're attached to the sameness and attachment is what causes suffering when things change when we lose things when we break things when things aren't like they used to be aren't like they were and you know change can happen gradually you know every day may look the same but look at where you were a year ago 
How did your life look then? How different was it? What about five years ago? When you start looking back, you start realizing that it seems like we're doing the same thing every day and nothing ever changes, but here we are a year later of doing the same thing and things are completely different, right? And granted, today, 2020 is throwing some changes at us, right? So whether we want to or not, we're under global changes and it's been really hard for a lot of us to adapt. You know, change is scary. It's unknown and the unknown is innately dangerous, right? But not necessarily. That's just how we perceive it. But being attached to the sameness, to the everything that's always been going on, always been happening, is what causes the suffering when the change occurs. So when something breaks, your attachment to it is what causes the pain within you. When you lose something, your attachment to it is what causes the pain of losing it. Um, Every time we have tile floors and so we break things pretty regularly around here and we call it sacrificing to the floor gods. Um, I'll tell my husband like, the floor gods took another sacrifice today. But uh, um, anytime we break something, especially if it's mine, used to I got really upset, you know, like that was my favorite coffee mug. Are you serious? You couldn't have held on to that a little bit better. That was my favorite coffee mug. Of course, you never break anything of yours. You know, those are the types of things we see, we say when things get broken. Um, the way I drink coffee is over. It'll never be the same. What am I going to do now? Well, now, since it's become more frequent, my whole philosophy behind it is, well, if something breaks or if I lose something, then I go, well, I must have been too attached to that. And I acknowledge that everything I lose in life leads way to leads way for something better to come into my life. So, yeah, that was my favorite coffee mug. And this is a super small example. You know, we can't compare losing a coffee mug or breaking a coffee mug to losing a relative or a friend. But in a way it is the same, you know, we gotta, we gotta simplify these things so that we can come to terms and understanding with it. Okay. So Of course, we can't compare losing a friend or a relative to breaking a coffee cup, okay? Two vastly different things, but when we simplify everything, the coffee, cu the coffee mug was always going to be lost. It was always going to get broken. It was eventually going to become destroyed, just like we are. You know, the only thing we're guaranteed in life is death, right? So if we can acknowledge that and come to terms with the fact that, that this is the world we're living in, then we can become, we can begin to become less attached to things, to worldly things, right? Because it's just an illusion, you know, the attachment to the coffee mug, it was always going to be destroyed eventually. So when we acknowledge that everything ends eventually, when it comes, it's less of a shock. It's shock to the nervous system, essentially. It's less friction. You can flow more easily into it. You can meet things with a, well, we're here. And we can go at it from one of two ways. We can either go at it with, oh, the world is over. This will never be the same. Nothing will ever be better. Like this is terrible, awful, horrible, but like attracts like, right? So make sure that that's the direction you want to head in. And I get it. We're human. I still get upset at the coffee mug. It's not a huge deal anymore though. Like used to, it was a huge deal. I was very upset at the coffee mug, but now it's more like 
well, man, I really hate that this is when we're dealing with this now, you know. Um, but the coffee mug was always going to get broken. It was just a matter of when the coffee mug was going to get broken, right? And that's how all things in life are. It's reoccurrence of cycles. And all things come to an end. This opens up opportunity because... You could go the negative way, you know, uh, it's terrible. Or you could be like, well, don't like this, but now I can get a better coffee mug. Maybe I can find one that I like more. Uh, this creates more space in my cabinet. It was getting kind of crowded. I have too many coffee mugs. So, you know, because I mean, really, we only need like one or two, right? Um, so attachment causes suffering and when we can learn to be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more patient, a little bit open-minded, open-hearted, that's a thing, then we can shift from the distraughtness of the thing breaking and move into opportunity. Because when one door closes, another opens, right? We've all heard that. And it applies to more than just moving from one job to another. It applies to everything. You know, we lost the coffee, coffee mug, but now we have the opportunity to find a, find a really cool handcrafted coffee mug on Etsy with like crystals and stuff, right? And man, that is going to be some enchanting coffee and your every morning is going to start out absolutely magical because you're drinking out of a crystal encrusted handcrafted coffee mug, right? And that would have never happened if the first coffee mug hadn't broken in the first place, which is now led to sparking the thought of, well, now I need a new one which you would have never happened if it hadn't broken, right? So that leads you into a new opportunity to have an even bigger and better one. And this is a very mild example that we can apply to all aspects of life. You know, and maybe it's not the coffee mug. Maybe it's, you know, the school systems and the changes that all of, they're all going through, we're all going through at the moment. You know, approach it with patience, an open mind, trust, trust is a big one, um, understanding, patience, and be like, okay, see how you can help with the situation, you know, don't fight against it, fighting against it is, I mean, absolutely, there are things worth fighting for, for sure, for sure, but decide if it's worth fighting or not, you know, um, Something like fighting for your rights is obviously something worth fighting for, but something like fighting against the school system change, fighting against the fact that the mug is broken, you know, these are not worth your time, not worth your energy, and it doesn't make sense fighting against it. You know, the mug is broken. The mug is broken. The milk is spilt fighting against it, being angry about it, wishing it hadn't happened is a waste of our time and energy. Instead, okay, this is the situation that life has presented us. This is what's sitting in front of us. How can we push on from here? Now what? What is the next step? How can I make the best of this situation? How can I help other people around me that are facing the same situation, these types of things. So it's all about a mindset. It's all about shifting from one point of view to another. Patience, flexibility, open-mindedness, trusting the path and everything. We, we touched on this a little bit about how I thoroughly believe, and you probably do too if you're here, that everything happens for a reason. Everything is, I mean, I believe in free will. I believe in 
the universe directing us towards our true path and what was meant for us. And when we can trust that the good and the bad, which is relative and a whole subject that I should probably cover, when we trust that both the good and the bad are directing us towards where we need to be, what we need to be doing, who we need to see, meet, talk to, whatever, then we can step into a sense of alignment with everything around us and flow. Things, when we trust the process and give ourselves to it willingly and fully, like, okay, you know, when the, when the mug breaks, when the change happens, you're like, instead of fighting, you're like, okay, well, where do you want me to go with this? And just try to keep an open, level head and mind about it, then things will direct you and you just follow them. And you just, I think all the time about how, like, what's an example? I went to a restaurant last night and like hit a drive through. I didn't go to a restaurant. I hit a drive through because I left yoga and had to go get, run some errands and I was starving to death. So I was in the drive through and I kind of like, you know how you drive somewhere and then all of a sudden you like wake up and you're like, how did I drive here? I don't remember driving here. Um, it was kind of like that, but not to the same extreme. Like, I was sitting in the uh, drive through and all of a sudden I was like, how did I choose this place? And in my head I was like, I don't know, I just do things and it works out. And that's exactly how I live most of my life. I just do things and it works out. Because when you can cut your thinking mind off, and it falls back to your subconscious, which is connected to your higher conscious. And it, it will take the driver's seat and it will just drive you and do things. And if you can take your mind, take a step back from the thinking and just let things unfold and just follow the path of least resistance, then things work out. And um, I had a sandwich, it was delicious. But, um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with coping with change and just allowing things to unfold as they do, trying not to be attached to them, releasing attachment. You know, it's not a new thought philosophy throughout spirituality. And, you know, we've heard the monks and stuff all say that you must release attachment to worldly things. And, a lot of us don't understand that when we get into it. I know I didn't. I was like, what? I like worldly things. I don't want to release attachment to them. I don't want to live with nothing and be happy with nothing and take a vow of poverty and all of that. What? Release attachment to worldly things. That's not what it means, though. You can absolutely release attachment to having the coffee mug and still really enjoy the fact that you have a coffee mug and really look forward to buying a new jewel encrusted coffee mug that's handcrafted like man yeah luxury that's awesome we have created a world of worldly things to make ourselves more comfortable and make life more pleasant, make life more fun and enjoyable. And you should absolutely enjoy all of the aspects to it. But when your jewel and crusty coffee mug gets broken, be like, well, don't like that, but what's the new best next thing? You know, let's move on to something new. It keeps life interesting. Another thing is um, they did a study. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was a study that I read about. Um, essentially, you know, how your childhood seemed, felt like it took forever, right? Like, we all felt like we were kids for decades, okay? 
forever. <laughs> it took so long. And then once you get a, you once you become an adult, things go by really fast, right? They just go, 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 go. It's like in a blur. And um, they found that the reason that is is because when you're a kid, everything's brand new. Everything's always new. You're always learning new things. You're always doing new things, experiencing new things. And that's why time seemed to go so slowly. When you become an adult, especially by the time you're 30, you've pretty much done, experienced most of everything that you're going to do and experience. Most of us become very settled into our routines, very comfortable, just doing the same thing all the time. They said if you want to, and that's why time speeds up because it all begins to blur together. Well, if you want to live a really long life and feel like you've lived a really long fulfilled life, always be experiencing, learning, doing, trying new things. And this will create the same exact time slow down thing that occurred when you were a kid. And I have absolutely experienced this, okay? People, family members especially, will be like, what? Your son's in kindergarten. It feels like just yesterday he was, you were bringing him home from the hospital. I was like, no, it feels like 15 years ago I was bringing him home from the hospital. It's been a very long road. <laughs> but yeah, so be comfortable with the discomfort of constant change in Embrace it. Enjoy it. Be like, man, yeah, I rearrange my living room like once a month or the whole house. Create space for adjustment. The initial shock, you know, we're all human. Coming back to that factor, we're all human. When the coffee mug breaks, you're like, it takes an adjustment period. It does. But learn how to take a step back and create space between everything and I want you to do this anyway I cover this a lot it's why we do a meditation in the beginning of these lives it's everything creating space is everything especially in this day and time when everything's crunched together everything just <laughs> everything just butts up against each other and one another one thing after another you don't get to breathe in between it the uh, world is moving so much faster than it used to and we can get really lost really quickly and really overwhelmed by the things always constantly going 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 so it's important that we learn how to create space in between absolutely everything that we can so I highly advocate creating space always. When you wake up in the morning, take a few deep breaths, create some space before you roll over and grab your phone, before you get out of bed. Um, go about your morning routine, whatever. Create some space before you just jump into things. If you need to set your alarm clock for... 10 minutes early, 5 minutes early, then do that because you don't need a lot of space, okay? Especially once you start getting used to it, um, creating the space, finding your center, relaxing your body, just expanding because everything gets really constricted and we feel like the weight of the world is crushing us. And when you can create space, you're just like, mm. and it helps. And it lets the transition from this thing ending, moving into the next step of your day, a lot smoother, a lot more in flow, a lot easier to navigate. So take a step back, create space, and it, it can be 30 seconds, it can be a minute, and that's plenty of time. Just five breaths, whatever works for you, is plenty. Just create that space, center yourself, get your emotions right, get your mind right, and then take the next steps. And so the more you learn to create space in between each and every single little thing should be your goal, then the better you're going to feel and the easier it's going to be when you get that shock of instant change 
to cope, to adjust. You know, there's always going to be adjustment period. And the bigger the thing, the more time it's going to take to adjust, okay? I know. I get it. Don't be hard on yourself. Take the time you need, okay? Everybody's going to be different. Everybody processes things differently. Acknowledge that you're working in the right direction. And even if you're not there yet, you're going to get there eventually. Just like the weather. If you don't like it, just hang out a little bit. Be patient. Create some space. Give, you, give yourself what you need to adjust, and you will get there. Find others going through the same changes. You know, the school system's over a huge overhaul right now, and local parents, somebody, some local parent, created a Facebook group for just the parents in our area to discuss all the changes that are going on, to reach out for help, ask questions, help navigate, um, to go over the problems that they're having, to, you know, talk it out, and it helps tremendously. So, identify what change you're having trouble coping with, and then find others that are going through the same thing. Talk to them, ask questions, um, provide help where you see that you can provide help at. You know, you get back what you give out, and you know, just talk to them. Venting is fine, but we don't want to go into it just complaining to be complaining, okay? You don't want to be that person. You don't want to, when you, when you walk into a room or a group or whatever, and someone's just, yeah, 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 this, this, this is bad, this is terrible, this is horrible, this is, I can't believe they, I can't, you know. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to read that. If you want to go into it and vent, though, then do that. And know the difference. Know the difference between wanting to complain for the sake of complaining and wanting to vent to get this out just so you can feel better, okay? And acknowledge it. Uh, feel free to tell them, you know, start the paragraph with vent, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> and then end it with something positive, like, thank you for reading, um, thank you for listening to my vent, uh, I already feel better just getting this out, uh, if you have advice, if you, you know, something like that, okay, be constructive with yourself just as you would be constructive with somebody else. Um, yeah, it helps a lot. Finding people that are going through the same thing that you're going through it helps a lot. And there's always somebody who's going through the same thing you're going through, okay? Always. You just have to find them. And it helps a lot to not feel like you're alone. Ask for support when you get in there, when you find those people. Ask for support. If you need my support, if you need my help, you have to ask. I can't read minds. None of us can read minds. Um... You have to be like, you have to raise your hand and be like, hey, I need help with X, Y, Z. And if you can just, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I am world's worst about asking for help. But if you can just raise your hand and ask for help, help will come. Help will come. But you first have to raise your hand and be like, hey, I need help over here. And then last but not least, I always, always, always recommend journaling, keeping track of what's going on, how you feel, what you've tried, what you plan to try, what's working, what's not working. That way, you know, when you write it all down, you can get a bird's eye perspective that otherwise wouldn't be available to you necessarily in your head. You know, when it's in your head still, then it's still a personal problem and you're engulfed in it, you're swimming in it, and it's an issue that you can't really look at the bigger picture of because you're living it right now. When you get it out on paper, then you can get a bird's eye view of it, look and see what you have it all laid out in front of you. So you can be more practical about it. Um, you can only write so much, sort of, whereas your mind can go in a hundred different directions simultaneously. 
But when you're writing, it has to be focused because you can only write so many words in a line at a time, right? So it slows everything down, gives you time to process, gives you time to see and look at what's going on and be constructive from there with what's the next step? How can I go from here? So I'm going to wrap that up now and um, let me know what you think. I will put all this together and have it ready. I'll have this video edited so we'll knock out all the parts where my kids came in and interrupted screaming and stuff. Sorry. Um, and I'll formulate it into a blog post so that you can read it and look at it all. And once again, times may change on these Facebook lives, which I, it's not a big deal. I'm just making you aware of it. And um, so stay tuned for that. If you need anything, please let me know. Please drop your questions. Um, reach out if you need help, support, and anything. Tell me what you're going through so that I can best formulate some content to help you with it. I can't, the more you tell me, there's not oversharing, okay? Tell me all the stuff so that I can formulate some content for you. It helps me help you a lot, a lot, a lot. In the meantime, if you would like to sit down and have a conversation, I offer free 30 minute calls. Um, just reach out content. Confidence to content is a program that I just launched and it helps you find the confidence to share your voice with the world, get your message heard. And also on Thursdays in here, we're going to start having expert guests. So that's fun. Tune in every Thursday. It'll be um, a pre-designated time, but it will change depending on their availability every Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Let me know if there's some subjects that we don't cover that you would like to see covered and I can go find an expert for you. So yeah, let me know. Hit like, hit share, hit publish, like, you know, all the things, all the things, and I will talk to you later.